Fantasy Star Beneath a New Light was created by Redwall10 using RPG Maker BX Ace. And while the game does contain a lot of the spelling and grammar errors I've come to expect from Redwall10, this game does have probably the best balance of any game he has ever created. This isn't to say the balance is perfect, but I'll get into the details of that in a bit. Before I jump into the gameplay issues, I'd like to discuss the overall narrative, its presentation, and the game's overall efforts at characterization. To summarize the plot as quickly as possible, it centers around a few youths who embark upon a quest for a young world leader in order to combat the forces of the criminal organization Black Pepper. Black Pepper's plans center around stealing the power of photons through dark gemstones in order to acquire a great power, which they will then use to take over the universe. Of course, through the power of youth, friendship, and perseverance, you'll discover that you are more than a match for the forces and leaders of Black Pepper. Now with the power of your spellcasting fingertips, the ability to save the universe as we know it. If you can't tell from the summary, the game is rather generic in terms of its overall plot, but I'll be lying if I said it wasn't told decently. The real issue for the story comes in the form of its long list of spelling and grammatical errors. In fact, the amount of simple spelling and grammar errors on display here really does begin to drag down the game. But it can lead to some unintentionally hilarious scenes, like when the villains claim they will obtain a great power. In terms of characterization, the game does a decent job establishing the personalities of most of the characters early on, but it never really feels like it focuses on the characters in any meaningful way after that. Most of the dialogue feels like it exists to spoon-feed thus the plot, rather than reveal insights into the nature of the playable or non-playable characters. Though I also had to find some of the plot points and non playable characters in this game a bit... iffy. For starters, there's a hooker on the Pioneer 2. There's a female character that apparently likes it when the party spies on her while she's bathing. There's another woman in a pub that offers to show you a good time. And the main game features a damsel in distress plot device about saving young girls from being reduced into sex slaves. All these elements on their own would probably be negligible to me, but in combination, they begin to feel sexist, even if that wasn't Redwall 10's intent. Though the biggest issue with the story of this game is that there are certain scripting errors that cause the game to crash during certain story events, or result in the game effectively being unbeatable. While you can defeat the final boss, a pivotal event isn't set up correctly in order to initiate the ending credits. As such, you'll simply wander around aimlessly after that battle, unable to end the game, but not having anything else left to do. Fantasy Star Beneath the New Light features a turn-based combat system with random encounters, which is just fine in my opinion. Where the game begins to suffer the most in this area is in terms of its combat balance. This isn't to say the game is super easy or unbearably hard to get through, but the game does place a heavy emphasis on magic. So much so that during my let's play of the game, I basically spam the same spells over and over and over again in order to get through combat quickly while avoiding damage. This is because the enemies are well aware of the power of magic in this game and will usually spam group targeting spells if they get an opportunity. As such, I advise anyone playing this game to deny the enemy this opportunity as much as possible, and would recommend holding off on engaging the various bosses until you're at least level 20. This way you'll have access to one of the most powerful abilities in the game, and the most necessary if you wish to defeat the various bosses in a reasonable number of tries. Outside of that major gripe, the game also suffers from a few smaller issues as well, such as almost all the stores in the game selling the exact same items and equipment. To expand upon the minor issues, the game also fails to reward the player for exploration. So much so that the amount of treasure chests in this game can probably be counted on one hand with a digit or two left over, and any of the chests you do come across are in areas that you are required to go through in order to advance, so there is no reason to get off the beaten trail in this game. The mapping in this game is much improved upon Redwall 10's earlier works, and does show you is getting a better grasp of how to design world maps and dungeons. The various areas in this game tend to feel about right in terms of size, and it's nice to have something truly positive to say about this game. And to continue that trend, the various enemy sprites in this game are rather solid and are clearly not part of the default package for this RPG Maker engine. But I'm not sure if Redwall 10 created these himself or lifted them from another source. On the sound side of things, the game does a few questionable things in my opinion. For starters, the game includes the use of voice clips for before and after battle taunts. These short audio clips add nothing to the game in my opinion and make me wonder why the rest of the game doesn't include voiceovers. The other questionable decision in my perspective is some of the music selections.
I just don't know if songs like that fit all that well into a sci-fi or fantasy soundtrack, but neither the voice clips nor the questionable music is enough to cripple this aspect of the game for me. Despite all the problems I've brought up in this review, this game does feel rather average in terms of its overall quality. At least it feels rather average in the face of all the other RPG Maker games I've played over the past few months. But while I could still use a bit more tweaking and fine tuning in order to become something truly special, as it stands, the game does make for a decent time killer if you're looking for some mild to decent entertainment for a couple of hours. 